right, what a beautiful little crowd we have here today with no masks on! I made the mistake of uh, starting this speech out with a song, so uh, please bear with me. I am uh, nowhere near as uh, vocally talented as the beautiful Melanie Switzer, but uh, I'll see what I can do here. I hear a train coming, it's rolling round the bend. And I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when Cause I'm stuck in COVID prison <laughs> Time keeps dragging on When I see the second wave I hang my head and cry <laughs> The second wave is just around the corner just as the first wave started with a couple of prominent political figures testing positive, as does the second wave. Yeah. Aaron O'Toole, the federal conservative leader, and Francois Blanchet, leader of the Bloc Québécois, have both tested positive for the COVID-19 virus. <laughs> Neither one of them is showing any symptoms. They will be isolated until after Justin Trudeau's throne speech. Is this a coincidence? <laughs> This is the same Aaron O'Toole that is always seen wearing his mask. Even his wife and kids dutifully don their masks in public. O'Toole even stated in his platform that Canadians need to get used to wearing masks in public. What is the purpose of having political parties if they are all going to agree? So here we are, ever rising case numbers. Australia is locked down hard. Dissenters are being targeted. Disseminators of quote-unquote conspiracy theories prosecuted. Pregnant mothers being arrested in their own homes in front of their children for nothing more than sharing a Facebook post. Police kicking down a man's door for organizing a simple protest. All this tyranny for rising case numbers. Rising case numbers caused by a fraudulent test owned and patented by the Center for Disease Control. Even Dr. Hinshaw was forced to admit that out of 10,000 tests in Alberta, only six asymptomatic people tested positive. Combine that with the words of the Ontario Chief Medical Officer of Health, of those six positive asymptomatic cases, three of them were most probably false positives. Hinshaw then went on to explain that asymptomatic people do not spread the virus. So how can all of this be justified? Even with the rising case numbers, Alberta's ICUs only have seven COVID patients out of over 700 ICU beds. There are only 44 people within Alberta hospitalized for COVID. Of course, the vast majority of those in hospital are people with several pre-existing conditions. And most of them are over the age of 80. It is beyond obvious that this virus has little to no impact on the typical resident of this province. There has not been a single death in all of Canada of a person under the age of 19. From age 19 to 49, there have only been three deaths in the province. From age 49 to 59, there have been a total of five deaths in Alberta. In any other time, the people labeled as COVID deaths would have simply been labeled death by natural causes or old age. COVID-19 has miraculously cured old age. Are you buying this? I predict that the second lockdown will be far worse than the first. No restaurant will survive. Churches will be bankrupted. Homelessness will abound. Despair will be thick in the air. There will be a, there will be a very real pandemic of suicides and drug overdoses. One that started months ago. If we let this happen, our children are doomed. This government has turned every school into a Hitler youth indoctrination camp. Conform or die. If you don't comply, people die. It's about respect, you know. Your mask protects others. Don't visit grandma or you'll kill her. Don't go to a family barbecue or you could all die. 
How can children survive this mentally? How can anyone survive this mentally? The strain is killing all of us. I haven't had a normal night's sleep in months. Neither of you. This is by design. This has nothing to do with a virus. This is a plot to turn us all into slaves, mind-controlled slaves. When you go shopping, all you see are mindless zombies everywhere. Their eyes are already dead. The cure is worse than the virus by orders of magnitude. As if it wasn't bad enough that people lost their livelihoods, lost their businesses, lost their homes. Kids are going hungry. Domestic violence is escalating. People are killing themselves. As if all that were not bad enough. This has divided our nation into two camps. Those wanting more lockdown and those opposing it. These battle lines divide families. They divide husbands and wives, divide mothers and daughters. We are witnessing the Nazification of Canada. This us versus them mentality will lead us to genocide. And it is all based upon lies. Lies that are, contra are contradictory. Lies that have zero, ba zero basis in fact. This brainwashing program has completely erased over 70 years of tolerance and acceptance for those with disabilities. Mass-exempt children are being treated like lepers in school. They are singled out and shamed. Teachers are sticking mask-exempt children in the corner, separating them from the other students, even going so far as to tell the other students to have nothing to do with the unmasked children to protect them. Just yesterday, I spoke to a young high school student that explained that the mask makes her lightheaded. She has been using essential oils in the mask, just as corset-wearing women a hundred years ago used smelling salts. This is lunacy. Rather than educate, all the teachers are doing is indoctrinating. Every grade has been doing assignments on masks. The younger grades get to color a mask as part of an art project. The older grades are being asked to write about their mask. What in the hell has happened to this once great nation? Are you going to sit by and watch this atrocity unfold any further? No! no. When will Canadians say no more? No! When will Canadians say never again? No! When will Canadians stand up? No! no. The typical Canadian has been so brainwashed that they have taken it upon themselves to go over and above the recommended guidelines. Most Alberta school boards have completely ignored the guidelines put in place by Dr. Hinshaw. Hinshaw said that masks would not be required under grade four, but most boards are making kindergartners wear masks. Hinshaw said that masks were not required at desks, only when passing through common areas. Yet, almost all school, school boards are forcing students to mask all day. When a child takes the bus to a rural school, they are wearing a mask for 10 hours a day. Our healthcare professionals complain about wearing a mask for a simple work day. Masks have known side effects, all of which could be symptoms of COVID, sore throats, rashes, infections. These mask mandates alone could be enough to just justify a second lockdown in the minds of the typical Canadian. This forced segregation of the disabled is evening, even happening in our churches. The ushers at churches are pointing out those with medical exemptions and not letting anybody near them for their own safety. People won't even visit relatives in care homes, even though it's allowed. One woman reports that she only visits her uncle through the window as she doesn't want to be responsible having, for having the care home locked down any further. These poor old people have been in solitary confinement for nearly seven months now. This is what we do to our most hardened criminals, put them in the hole. And every senior in a care home is, is dealing with this. Enough is enough. It's patently obvious that all of these restrictions, combined with brainwashing and induced fear, are killing people. This concoction, straight from the pit of hell, will kill exponentially more people than COVID ever could. The damage caused to families, relationships, individuals, to all people will never be truly known. It is so severe that it cannot even be quantified. 
The time to end this is now. Leaders of Canada, we implore you to open your eyes to the horrific atrocity that is unfolding under your command. You are responsible. We will never forget and we will never forgive. You are destroying my nation. You are killing my people. I will not stand by in silence. I will not comply. God is watching. You will pay for your crimes either in this life or the next. God is on the side of people that speak the truth. You have no idea the suffering you are about to unleash. This is going to be hell on earth. We will all pay the price forever. This unfolding atrocity is being permitted by God to bring the people back to reality. Your government never cared about you. It is time to take the control back. Get committed. Government is supposed to be for the people, by the people. But you've been spiritually asleep. Wake up your soul. Your soul is crying out for freedom. God created you to be free. The very first man and woman were granted freedom by God and from God. This freedom can only be taken when you give it away. They can kill my body, but only God can destroy my soul. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive the trespasses of others. Let us not into mind control and deliver us from evil masquerading as good. For thine is the kingdom and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let freedom reign everywhere. Let it reign from every rooftop, every bell tower, and every dinner table.